So, Steve. <laughs> Hello. Where did it all begin? Where did it all begin? Music uh, came into my life, I suppose, when I was about nine years old. I had a pair of chopsticks given to me, and I just started using them as drumsticks, just tapping on things, wrapped a load of gaffer tape around them to make them a bit thicker, because we couldn't afford real drumsticks. So um, I had these chopsticks, and I just made full use of them, tapping on things, and just getting a feel for playing drums. And then a kit appeared in, in our shed uh, from somewhere, can't quite remember where, and uh, that was the next, the next level. So at what point did you realise you wanted to pursue music as a career? Uh, one of them was being told at school by the music teacher that I wasn't allowed to go in and play the drums in the, in the drum room. And she used to keep the door locked and uh, wouldn't let anybody in there, which I thought was ridiculous, you know. I was very keen to get into playing drums and being told I wasn't allowed to go in there and keep the door locked to me, that was just ridiculous and that was just, that gave me the drive and the incentive to want to pursue it. So it was kind of a, a rebellious kind of way, I suppose. Okay, so, yeah. you're currently uh, working on your solo career, mm. but were there any other projects and bands that you were involved with in the past? Yeah, quite a few. One particular band people always associate me with is Big Big Train, uh, who, who doing very well now. I was 15 when I joined that band. Um, I haven't played with them for a long time. So I've done such a lot since being in that band. You know, I went and joined the Enid. Um, I've done probably hundreds of gigs, you know, with different types of bands. So there's, there's been a lot since I've, you know, been involved with that, that band. And I wish them every success. They're doing really well now. And uh, they've been going, going a long time. And uh, I want to um, carve out a new, a new uh, following for myself, you know and not to be too associated with, with them now because it's all in the past um, and I wish them very well. What made you decide to go forward as a solo act in the end? Um, it's a very good question. I always wanted to do my own album. I've always loved tunes, TV theme tunes. Being a drummer, uh, that was, you know, that's all I kind of knew, you know, and then, but I always had this dream that I would be able to do more. One day being able to do that myself, composing music myself, I've always had that kind of closet kind of dream and um, it was just progressing over a lot of years, you know. I bought a keyboard and just started tinkering away on it and I found that I could actually come up with melodies and things that didn't actually sound too bad when I listened back to it, to it you know, and I think just one, one day I was in my studio listening back to some stuff I put down and I, you know, I was getting goosebumps on my eyes, I think, you know, not to you know, sound like I'm anything amazing, but it was actually, right, I could, could write some melodies, so now I just need to find out how to put them into arrangements and structured songs. So there was a lot of time working out how to uh, make songs or pieces of music, because at the time it was, they, were just, they were just chunks of sounds. When did you start developing your new album, Once We Were Hard Black? It came about when I was finishing off Tales from the Silent Ocean, my debut album. And um, I had loads of ideas, and I, I wanted to carry on writing because uh, I just felt like I was on the, on a the, on the roll, and the momentum was still there. So I just I thought, well, you know, just I just carry on writing. So you said that you were carrying on the momentum from your previous album. Uh, did you have the same inspiration for this new album, or did it come from somewhere else? There is some personal stuff in there, I suppose. You know, things from the past. You know. All that stuff comes into it, but um, I, I think I wanted to expand on that. Though you know, I just I didn't want to just keep writing songs about being heartbroken and all, all that. You know, I like all that stuff. You know, that romantic side of things. Uh, but I wanted to bring some more colour into it, some more themes. So yeah, it, 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 I guess it's 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 about um, the, the timelines and certain timelines and the past and about primarily about this soldier who appears in in different timelines and his relationships in those different timelines. In the uh, one, one particular timeline, he's a soldier, Second World War, um, and just his relationship was going on there, and with his wife who, you know, dies uh, when, when he's away, uh, you know, being a soldier. Uh, so that's just one little story. There's just lots of little themes and stories and things like that. So you've just finished shooting a music video for That Could Have Been Us. What's um, that song about? I think it's kind of split into two different themes really. That could have been us as in, that could have been our ideal life, happy couple together married, you know. But it isn't unfortunately, because in this other timeline, my wife, she died in a car crash. 
So that could have been us in the car crash together, but it wasn't, but it happened just that she was the one that was in the car crash and I'm, I'm left on my own grieving. So it's about grieving for, for my wife. Go and watch the video and uh, decide for yourself what you make of it. What has been the hardest moment in your musical career so far? I wouldn't say there's been any one particular moment that's been hard. A lot of it's been really hard because um, I've had to make lots of sacrifices in my life to uh, to sort of pursue a dream, really. And if you listen to the song, that could have been us. And there is a lyric in there that um, this dream I couldn't let go. Uh, and it was always the music. It was always all about the music. And I always wanted to be a drummer, you know, but that changed over time because I realised, I think probably the hardest part actually thinking about was, was accepting the fact that I was never going to be Dave Weckl or, uh, you know, any of those top drummers. I just kind of accepted one day that it wasn't going to happen like that. As soon as I accepted that, um, it became a lot easier and I, I, I found that I could do other things, play a bit of you know, piano, play a bit of guitar, sing a little bit. It just became a lot easier from there. So perhaps the hardest part was letting go of, of the whole drumming thing because now I'm much more than just a drummer. You know? Back then I just wanted to be like the best drummer in the world. I spent years and years and years trying to impress my dad even, you know, because he, he was always so very encouraging of my drumming to the point that it would, it would become an obsession for both of us and I would always try to impress him. In a way I did, but you know, it was time for me to move on and, you know, do other things and expand my musicality and not just be a drummer, you know, so that was, it was the hardest thing, but then it became a lot easier. What's been your fondest memory in your music career? One, one that comes to mind just now, seeing as I'm being uh, spontaneous today. Uh, is when I, joined, when I was in the Enid actually, going back into the 90s, when me and Grant became very good friends. Grant was the guitarist in the band. And, um, it was all quite new, you know, he, he just kind of joined. Um, we got on just like a house on fire. We were just, you know, it was like kind of explosive in, in, in a lot of ways. We just, you know, we drink a lot and um, just go crazy. And, you know, just got this one memory of me and him sitting up on this beam, like, in the roof above the studio and we're just sitting up there, we just we'd climb up onto this beam just like with our cans, our tramp juice and our roll ups and we're just smoking and drinking and just having a whale of a time, just music blasting out and uh, I'll never forget that. It was just one one that ring and just sit up there and get plastered, you know. They were the days. <laughs> so what are your plans for your next album? Part two of Once We Were, Once we were Part Two is, is coming out in December, and uh, that's already been done. So that's that. You know, I recorded both albums together. It was the record company that decided to split them and release one uh, in the early part of the year, and then the second one in December, you know, toward the end of the year. So six months gap in between, and come back with Part Two, see what people make of that, and then hopefully do some shows. Got to find a band first. What is your message for your fans watching this video? Do I have fans? Um, <laughs> if there are fans listening, I'd like to just say thanks for listening and, um, uh, and you know, there's hopefully more to come uh, after this album. We'll start working on a new album uh, sometime early next year and just watch out for some gigs because I want to get out there and play this stuff live and I'm uh, itching to get out there and play this live. So it'd be great to meet fan, you know, some fans. Uh, on the road at some point and um, just like to say thanks really, thanks for your support because uh, if it wasn't for the fans I, I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't keep carrying doing what I'm doing so yeah, thanks. Here we are. Is that a bit better? <laughs>